We develop hundreds of recipes here in the test kitchen, but before any of them get published or put on TV, we send them out to a small group of home cooks for a trial run. These folks make the recipe, then fill out a survey with questions like, could you find the ingredients? Did you have the right equipment? Or did you make any substitutions? We learn a lot from these surveys, and it's made one thing very clear. Lots of folks like to swap ground turkey for the ground beef, and they're disappointed with the results. Take this turkey meatloaf, for example. This was a beef meatloaf. We just put in ground turkey, and it is a brick. I mean, is this a meatloaf or a Boston paver? And here, let's take a look on the inside. Oh, if I can barely get my knife through that. Oh, it's dense. I mean, and look at this. It just crumbles right apart, almost like whitefish salad. It's I mean, horrible. This is terrible. Oh, we can do so much better. Oh, good. We tweak the recipe from top to bottom. You can't just swap in turkey and call it a day. They're different animals. Yes. Literally. They really are. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get going. We're going to make something much, much better. All right. I have three tablespoons of butter melting over low heat. Now we're adding butter because unlike pork or beef, turkey has very little fat. So we're going to add back some of that richness with the butter. That's right, because usually when you make meatloaf, you saute some aromatics, but it's just in a little bit of fat. This is substantially more fat in the pan. That's right. And I'm adding a little bit of baking soda, just a pinch. We're creating an alkaline environment that helps the onions break down a lot faster. I have half an onion. It's chopped up fine. Our onions are going to cook in only about five minutes, whereas they would take about 15 minutes. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. And we'll cook these for three or four minutes just until they start to soften and take on a little bit of brown color. All right. It's been about four minutes. You can see our onions are starting to get a little bit brown there. Nice They're and soft. Nice and soft in a quick amount of time. Because you don't want crunchy onions in a meatloaf. That's bad. No, you just want them to kind of fade away into the background, but give you that nice little flavor. Here's one garlic clove minced up. Classic stuff that goes in meatloaf. Teaspoon of fresh thyme. We want to cook that garlic down a little bit, let the flavor start to bloom. Smell it already? Mmm, you can. Okay, so it's been a minute. Mm -hmm. That garlic's been very fragrant. Yes, so good. And now I'm adding two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Packs a punch in terms of flavor. That's right. It goes into beef meatloaves as well because mm -hmm. it is so full of flavor. Yeah, and actually Worcestershire sauce is mostly vinegar, but it has lots of other things in it like sugar, molasses, garlic, clove, anchovies, tamarind, and then it's aged for a few months before it's strained and bottles. And that's why it has such a punch. Yeah, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah. So we'll let this reduce down for a minute just to concentrate those yummy flavors. All right, that looks good and yeah. smells good. It smells potent. Mm. So let's put this in a bowl. We'll let this cool down for a few minutes, and then we'll come back and mix up our meatloaf. Our onion mixture is nice and cool. I'm going to add two egg yolks. That'll add some nice richness to the lean meat that we were talking about, and it'll also help to bind the meatloaf together. Now, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. That's a lot of Dijon. It won't make the meatloaf too spicy because we're at two pounds of meat, so it'll be just the right amount. Mix that in. Okay, now I have my secret weapon for turkey meatloaf. <laughs> Three tablespoons of quick oats. Now this is very unusual. Right, now we wanted to kind of break up that dense texture that we saw in that horrible meatloaf. Yes. We tried everything. We tried bulgur, we tried ground nuts, we tried couscous. Turned out that quick oats were the very best. They break up that texture. You can't identify them as oats in the meatloaf, and they work really nicely. And they just cook right in the meatloaf. That's right. Now, if you can't find quick oats or you don't have them, you can use old-fashioned oats. You just want to chop them up really fine. Just don't use steel-cut oats. Okay. They'll stay kind of pebbly. They won't cook all the way through. I'm also adding two teaspoons of cornstarch. The cornstarch helps to trap all the nice juices that the turkey has, so it bakes up nice and moist. Also, three-quarter teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. Okay, so let's put our oat mixture in. The secret bowl of ingredients. <laughs> That's right, don't tell anyone. <laughs> now I have a third of a cup of chopped parsley. That's not so secret, but adds a nice little bit of color and flavor. Half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Now Parmesan has a ton of umami flavor, and turkey doesn't have a lot of that, so the Parmesan is gonna give us that nice savoriness that turkey lacks. That's a lot of flavor packed into that little bowl. It sure is, plus some texture from those oats. That's right. So now it's time for the turkey. It's turkey time. <laughs> so I have two pounds of 93 or 85% turkey, and I'm going to use my hands to mix this together. There's no better tool. You just want right. to get in there and have fun. So let me get going on that. 
When you go to the supermarket to buy ground turkey, you usually have two choices, a light-colored turkey and a dark-colored turkey. Now, the light-colored ground turkey is usually labeled 99% lean, and it's made almost entirely with turkey breasts. That means it has less fat, less flavor, and it cooks up to be very dry. Now, this darker-colored ground turkey is usually labeled either 85 or 93% lean, and it's our favorite because it's made with the thighs, the dark meat, so that it has a juicier texture and makes a better meatloaf. My hands are cleaned up. Let's make up a quick glaze to go on top of the meatloaf. Ooh, I love those sweet ketchupy glazes right on the top. I know, it's almost the best part. <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> well, let's do some medium heat here. I have a cup of ketchup, quarter cup of brown sugar, two and a half teaspoons of cider vinegar, just for a little bit of tartness, and fruitiness. You know, cider vinegar has that nice fruity flavor. And just a half teaspoon of hot sauce. Just a smidge. Just a tiny bit, just to, you know, give it that certain something. Okay, so we're gonna let this bubble away for five minutes. You keep an eye on it for me? You bet. All right, so I'm gonna shape this meatloaf. I have a little bowl of water here. I'm gonna wet my hands just so the meat doesn't stick too much to my Very hands. Very clever. We also have a wire rack here. We've lined it with aluminum foil. The foil will be for easy cleanup. The rack is just gonna promote even cooking. All right. Let's get this onto the aluminum foil. So no loaf pan here, just a nice freeform shape. Yep, we're going freeform today. We're going wild. <laughs> well, you get more surface area with a freeform shape. Yes. That means more area for the glaze. That's right. And everybody wants more glaze, at least I do when it comes to meatloaf, right? All right, so we're going for nine by five. How do you think I did? I think you nailed it. I think I did too. Let's just double check. It seems a little bit much to have a ruler out here, but if you take your time to make a perfectly shaped meatloaf, it's gonna cook evenly. Makes sense. Right. So it's been five minutes. You can see our glaze thickened up nicely here. That even smells like meatloaf to me. I know, right? <laughs> it's that distinctive glaze smell. It sure is. I'm going to brush half of it on the meatloaf now. I just have a pastry brush here. I'm just gonna do some painting. <laughs> and we wanna paint the sides too, not just the top, because we want that yummy glaze all around. This is another advantage of doing freeform, is that you get more glaze. So we're gonna bake this in a 350 degree oven for 40 minutes, then we'll take it out and add the rest of that glaze. Mmm, lacquer it on the top. Yeah, we want that first layer to set and dry so we can add even more glaze. Nice. And then we'll return it to the oven for another 35 to 40 minutes. All right, that is looking pretty good to me. I think that's about half. I'll get the oven door for you. Thank you. We're doing the upper middle rack here, 350 degrees for 40 minutes. All right. Ooh, that's looking good. That looks awesome. All right. So let's take its temperature here. We want it to be 160 degrees. That looks like a proper meatloaf. It does, doesn't it? That looks so good. And we are right where we want it. Nailed it. Well, let's let this rest for 20 minutes, and then it'll be time to dig in. It's been 20 minutes. All right. Let's do it. Eating time. Oh, so good. Do you like the end piece? I do. I love the okay. end piece. <laughs> it's kind of a small piece, though, right? Maybe you want one more. I'll never turn it down. <laughs> You can see right away that this is a very different meatloaf than the one we saw at the beginning that was like a brick. Oh yeah. This is light, has a much easier texture. The fork actually goes through it. It's gonna be nice and juicy. Mmm. Mm. I love the glaze too. Oh. Little sweetness, little tartness, mm -hmm. nice and sticky. It's really good. You know, this isn't just a great turkey meatloaf. This is just a great meatloaf. You'd actually never know that it was made with turkey. Mm -hmm. It's true. For the ultimate turkey meatloaf, start with sauteed onions and flavor them with Worcestershire and Parmesan. Add quick oats for texture and be sure to use dark ground turkey. Brush twice with glaze and bake the loaf on a foil-lined wire rack, and there you have it. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, turkey meatloaf with ketchup brown sugar glaze. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and selected episodes on our website, americastaskkitchen.com. So good. Oh, I love it. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>